Hello, welcome back, and thank you for joining me today. Let's have a very practical discussion about patience and our impatience on the path, and the need to simply take things one step at a time, one moment at a time. We all have moments of overwhelm in life. I guess that's an understatement, isn't it? I mean, perhaps you're experiencing just this sense of crazy, overwhelming madness right now. And we all experience it, whether you are right now or not, you have, and well, chances are you're going to again, but because we heap so much on ourselves in the world. When you think about all of the components to what we just go through every day that we call life, it's a lot. We have our work, if you work, and if you don't work, then you have the other things that you do to spend your time. We eat, sleep, drink water, exercise, pay bills, check our email. Yeah, all of that. And then we have our relationships with a romantic partner or a spouse, with our friends, with our kids, our business relationships, perhaps other relationships that you formed with other people. And really the list goes on and on. And here you find yourself on this wild ride called the spiritual path. Welcome, whether you're a course student or not, there is a message for you from the Holy Spirit. What that exactly is going to be, I don't know. But you do, and you'll know when you hear it. So, as always, I invite you to continue watching. Because as I turn on the camera and microphone and broadcast these videos, I have absolutely no idea what you're going to need to hear today. But I'll tell you who does know. The Holy Spirit knows. Our inner teacher knows exactly. And when something resonates, when it lands or connects or hits you in any way, it's him. Count on that. We all get this profound sense of overwhelm from time to time. And, and we, we just have so much going on in our lives that... Yeah, I, I'm actually surprised sometimes when I look around that more people aren't interested in spirituality. At least they don't appear to be at the moment. It actually is kind of surprising that more people haven't turned to this. But I understand why people haven't turned necessarily to A Course in Miracles. <laughs> One, it's quite new. It's quite new. The course was first published in the 1970s. So when you take a look at that, as compared to the many other religious and spiritual traditions that exist in the world, it's brand new. So there's that. There's also the fact that it cuts right to the chase, which people say they want all of the time, don't they, in the world. We say we want that, especially in business. What's the bottom line? give it to me straight. Okay, no problem. The course goes right there. There is no world. Central teaching. You heard that, right? And you know that that's true. Why? Because this is not our home. This is not who we are. The physical body, which you also know, deep down, deep down at one point or another, you have recognized that there's more to it than email, <laughs> happily. And eating and drinking and sleeping and meeting the needs of, of organism over here. 
Of course, there's more to it. And you have acknowledged that because you've formulated the thought in whatever language occurred to you, perhaps not at all, just a deep inner knowing or a gut feeling, an intuitive hit, that there's more to it than just the physical body. Yeah, of course there is. Of course there is. But as we run amok here, we have responsibilities in our relationships, work, we have bills to pay. So it's very easy to take our normal, and we call it normal a lot of the time, don't we? Sense of overwhelm and a deep anxiety. And we apply it to our spirituality, thinking in our great impatience that we have to become enlightened right now. Enlightenment in a weekend. We've all seen those workshops, perhaps attended some of them, and perhaps it was an enlightenment in eight days. Retreat in tropical Costa Rica. Yeah which, of course, would be a lot of fun. Costa Rica's gorgeous, by the way. Yeah. But you get the point. We want to apply our need for instant and immediate gratification to the spiritual path, and frustration is inevitable if and when we do that, because we discover that we've got work to do. That if we're going to awaken, we're going to have to do some things. <laughs> and that realization can hit in many different ways, sometimes very hard, Sometimes not as hard, but it's true. We all appear to be here because we need to do this deep inner work. That's what the spiritual path is all about. And A Course in Miracles, of course, is but one of many traditions. It's one of many doors. There are many doors, of course, in spirituality. Now, should you choose to follow this course, many of you are, you'll discover that it can really help you. It can save you time. We all want it right now. Yet what's going on for us is we see with the body's eyes, we see here in our daily lives only the surface level of our experience. There's much more within, which we all deep down know and recognize. Now, whether we're willing to do the work or not is a whole completely different question. Quite naturally, it is. Spirituality is an adult endeavor that requires our willingness and a sense of responsibility for our own experience, because we are responsible for our own experience. Mm. It's true. Mm. So, we get frustrated, we become anxious, and each and every one of us has had these days on the spiritual path where it feels like this isn't working. This course doesn't work. I haven't experienced my enlightenment yet, my full and complete enlightenment. What is up with that? Tell me, tell me. And you could, of course, use harsher language, <laughs> naturally, because we all have experienced this frustration. So what's worth considering is that 
If you're not fully awakened yet, you will be. You will be. Maybe not today. Maybe not next week or whenever. But if you're not, it's because there is still some forgiveness work to do. What we see in the world, in our day-to-day, moment-to-moment experience, corresponds to the surface level of everything. It's pretty much a veneer. There is a deep well underneath the surface, if you will. The unseen. Spirituality is all about the unseen, isn't it? It's about things that we just know deep down. You know deep down that you are not a physical body and that this is a limitation. It's a limitation on your communication with the all, capital A, which of course includes every single living thing because there is no separation of any kind at all. If you're new to these ideas, welcome. There is no world. (laughs) I repeat, (laughs) there is no world. Uh, If if you turn and run and say, um, that can't be, not a problem. I mean, really, right? You may be exposed here as you study and practice A Course in Miracles to ideas that blow your mind. Not a problem at all. What we're doing as we practice this course, when we forgive what appears in our experience, which is a lot, I mean, really, anything that is not wholly and completely joyous is, in fact, an opportunity for forgiveness. So as we go forth and we do that, What is worth paying attention to is this sense of impatience, this sense of wanting to have it all immediately and becoming bitterly frustrated or resentful even when awakening doesn't happen in a blinding flash. I mean, could it happen in the next five minutes for you? Yes. Is that likely? No. No, but we don't know when that's actually going to occur. All we're in charge of is what we think, what we say, what we do right now in the present moment. Past is gone, naturally. The future also does not exist. Why? It's not here, here, present In the present moment, we're invited to notice the anxiety. Notice if it's an existential dread, notice that. If it is a a sense of frustration or rage or, or sadness or whatever it is, we're responsible for just one thing, bringing our little willingness to the table, so to speak, to forgive what appears on the surface of life. If it is a some, somebody else, a person that appears to annoy you, forgive in your mind. You don't have to call them. You don't have to text them or, or message them on Facebook. Doesn't No, you don't have to do that. It's all in the mind. Forgive what's coming up for you in your experience. Here's what happens. When you do that, that surface level experience corresponds to something in this deep well of unconscious guilt and fear that we're all carrying. If that were completely gone, this conversation would not be happening. Guilt from what? From our supposed separation from God. We have managed to convince ourselves that we've run off and hidden in these little bodies, these extraordinary limitations on communication. Yeah. On this spinning ball of rock, 
supposedly safe and sound, away from love. Having thought we've thrown away the kingdom of heaven, what but a tremendous well of guilt, horror, right, may arise. We're not aware of this because it is unconscious. We're only aware of what's coming up for us in the moment. We forgive that. That corresponds to some of this unconscious guilt. How much and exactly what doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit knows that and clears that when we bring our little willingness to forgive what appears on the surface of life, he does the rest. It's powerful. We don't have to identify the correspondence at all. Just know that it's there. You're experiencing something, and if it's unpleasant, it is an opportunity for forgiveness. If it is pleasant and wholly joyous, that is symbolic of who we really are, our joy, our radiance as the Son of God. So what we're invited to cultivate is no different from any other spiritual path at all. It's patience, patience with ourselves. Forgive yourself for the anxiety of wanting it all to happen immediately. something that you might try. We're invited to have this patience and give yourself some grace. Most of us have what we think of and what appears to us to be a gradual process in spirituality where it appears to take time. Not a problem. And that's true because this is what time is for. Time is for us to forgive and to awaken. And the more we can bring our present moment awareness to this, the better. Because how can you forgive something if it's not even registering in your awareness, right? Hence the need for a practice like meditation, prayer, mindfulness. That's why these things are a thing in world spirituality. It is for this practical reason. When we become aware of an opportunity to forgive, then we can take that opportunity. But if we're not aware of it, it just goes right on by. And we'll see it again, perhaps in a different outward form. So we have some patience with ourselves, forgive ourselves, and we relax and trust the guidance of our inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, who is not, by the way, outside us. The Holy Spirit is part of our mind. We're invited to listen to this, to cultivate a relationship, indeed, with this part of our mind. We're invited here in A Course in Miracles to adopt the Holy Spirit as our teacher. Capital T, right? We're invited to adopt the Holy Spirit as our only teacher. When we attempt to do it without the Holy Spirit, we may achieve some temporary success, but it's only temporary, and it doesn't last, and most of our plans are so faulty that they often blow up in our face immediately or shortly after we conceive of them. So it, it's a very, very important point to relax and trust our inner teacher's guidance. It, it really is one step at a time, and, and patience is very, very important. Now, you may find that it's difficult for you to cultivate. Okay, not a problem. 
Right? We all have things here that we cling to that are going to be the more pronounced or perhaps the more challenging or difficult forgiveness lessons, things for us to release, to let go of. And, and yours will, of course, look very differently from somebody else's. That is simply a difference in outward form. The essence of it, the heart of the matter, the content is exactly the same. So whatever this looks like for you, your inner teacher will show you what to do. And it's up to you, it's up to each and every one of us, for that matter, to listen and to act accordingly. As much as we remember to do it, and when you forget, forgive yourself for forgetting and just come right back to it like a living, breathing meditation, when you notice yourself carried away, bring your awareness back to right now. Indeed, all of our life here could be likened to a living, breathing, walking meditation. When you notice yourself distracted, judging, blaming, bring your awareness back to forgiveness of the Son of God. When you notice yourself overwhelmed, bring your awareness back to forgiveness of yourself and whatever else appears on the surface, the screen of life. It only appears to be out there. There is nothing out there and no one else out there. There is only perfect oneness. So I thank you for joining me. And I hope that you find these conversations helpful in some way here. Again, when the broadcasts start, I really don't actually have any idea what's going to appear to come out of my mouth, honestly. I mean, I have notes oftentimes, and there are sometimes when we're going through a portion of the text, there's the language there, but I don't know what's really going to hit home for you. So you do, and there has been at least one message for you today. It's up to you to take that and run with it. Now, I am here as a guide and as a help uh, and assistance for you along the way, if you have questions, please feel welcome to leave them here. This comment thread right here in YouTube is a very, very good place to do just that. So uh, if you have not yet subscribed, please go ahead and do that. That's the prompt, that arrow in the corner of your screen here. Click that, you'll be invited to join us. Thank you to those of you who have recently joined us. There've been a number of you and it's an international community. What you'll get when you join us here is several videos each week because spirituality is ongoing. So why shouldn't the lessons be ongoing, right? All right, so I thank you for joining me and I will talk to all of you very soon.